Welcome to Diplomatic Channel. I am Amarachi Ubani. This week we bring you updates of a story we brought to you about a month ago. The brutal murder of a 19-year-old Nigerian student in Cape Coast University, Ghana. His parents have been so heartbroken over the issue, but have not relented in asking questions about what really happened to their son, why he was killed, where he was killed and why the school authorities wanted to keep the matter quiet. Unfortunately, they've maintained close contact with the Nigerian High Commission in Ghana, who've had their eyes on the case constantly since it was brought to their notice. Also, Nigerian lawmakers have been involved in trying to unravel the mysteries surrounding Godun Ayogu's murder. And earlier this month, the Lagos State's governor, Babatunde Fashola, wrote to the Ghanaian parliament requesting its investigation into Godwin's killing. His interest in the matter? governor says a case must not be allowed to be swept under the carpet. So we have a lot of eyes on this case, which is pretty unusual, because most times when things like this happen, there's no substantial follow-up in cases like these. Either the parents decide they've had enough, or investigations reach a dead end. But with recent developments on the case, it does seem like things are interchanging in this country and Nigerians can have a better deal outside uh, our shores. A couple of weeks back, the Nigerian High Commission called the Ayogos with news of a breakthrough on the case. Mrs. Lillian Ayogu, Godwin's mother, tells me what it is in this short interview I had with her over the weekend. Well, Mrs. Ayogo, thank you so much for calling us back into your home. You know, this is the Easter celebration. Lots of Christians are celebrating the resurrection of Christ. But for you, it's still a very difficult period of time. Right? If I liken the death of my son to that of Jesus Christ, yesterday, 19th, made it one moon, two moons that he passed on. And yesterday, they said Jesus Christ was returned for the Easter period. And I think. The death of Godwin to me and that of Jesus Christ, somehow I want to liken them. Because the way he died was like, he knew he was going to die when he met with those guys that killed him. Because they had, he fought them before they finally stabbed him to death. And there's a Bible passage that says, Woe to that man that through whom that the Son of Man will be betrayed. So to my son, he died a hero. I go to his Facebook account and I write, Godwin, you are gone, but you died as a hero. So to the Easter period, yeah, they say happy Easter. I want to join them and say, yeah, it is happy Easter because I'm a bit relieved because my son is dead, but he died a hero. Concerning the death of your son, there has been an update since the last time we spoke, right? Yeah. Uh, last week, precisely, the... Nigerian ambassador over the court, my husband, to say that there's a headway, that they made some headway, and we're like, for the very first time, we are hearing there's a breakthrough in the investigation, and it was like, they got some guys. And the funniest part was that they are all Nigerian. My husband said, Nigerians, he said, yes. And most of those guys they caught were his friends. So meaning when those guys, because there was this chat, we had, when he died, that one of his friends said that all his friends are on the run. Why are they running? That if he says what he knows about the death of Godwin, his own life will be in danger. But for the boy to come up and tell us what he knows about it, he was nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. So we were not there. We didn't even know what was going on. We were only acting on the information the roommate gave us. The Accra BI, BNI and the maid, the maid is the Accra police uh, investigation team that did that got this uh, breakthrough. The last time I spoke to your husband, he said that the school authorities wanted to shut down the case and the Cape Coast um, police were already ramping up on the case. But then now you mentioned the Accra police is involved. How did that happen? I think it should be when our governor, Governor Raji Babatunde Fashola, brought to the parliament that he's interested about this case. I think from that very week, because it didn't take up to one week plus. It didn't take about one week plus that that news was on the air, that they called us that they've caught some people. So I believe it's the efforts Nigerians here put on them that brought about this ray 
investigation that brought out the real truth about the matter. So how did you how did you hear um, about um, the latest that's going on? How did you hear about the suspects? Was it the Accra police that called you to tell you, or how how exactly did you get to know about this latest development? It's, we've not spoken with the police. We've not spoken with the police at the moment. So who gave you the information? The, the Nigerian ambassador over there, Mr. Poko. He called to tell us that they've made a breakthrough and they caught some guys. And they, are, they say they are much, but the ones they, they are, are like the culprits are about five of them in number. With the forensic test that was carried out on Godwin and then the tire. And one of the tires, they, 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 from the cars they arrested from his friends, one of the friends. That the last, the back tire, the forensic test they did it has, it has a resemblance, so it's, it matches with the forensic test they did. So from that, they got other people. So they released some people who they felt we are not there. So who we are not there, we don't know what actually, what the policemen, how they got the information. But this is what Mr. Poko told us, that they've got five Nigerians. So they've done their, their, their investigation team. They, don't, they know what they do. You can't come and tell them what they do. So for now, I don't know. If they find it that a uh, Ghanaian roommate is free, meaning he's free. If the suspects who are held in custody now are Nigerians, does that vindicate the Ghanaian roommates that he had just before his death? From, from what they told us, he's not part of them. So we are surprised. But I think they know best. I'm not there. Neither is my husband there. So they that went on to investigate, we never knew it was even his friends. So I felt, or I'm thinking, maybe the roommate helped with the investigation, or he was, I don't just know. But all I know is that they've caught five Nigerians who are involved in the murder. And the forensic test carried out was the same with theirs. They told us that they are still investigating, that more people are on the line. But for now, they've only gotten five. So we are still waiting. Do you think there was any reason they had to kill your son? I don't think they had enough reason. I don't even think they would even have one reason to take away the life of that boy. Because one, they can't even buy it with money. They themselves as a being, they can't buy their own very life with money, let alone snuffing life out of a fellow friend or a brother, because I could call him their brother because he was living with them. And one of them that, that, that they said he was among, that admitted that Godwin learned, that he said he's owing Godwin. He's, he was his former roommate in year one. So if- and That's a Nigerian. If that's a Nigerian. And if you tell me it's just the money, I don't want to believe it's the money because the money cannot be compared to his life. At times, I, I, if I sit down, I'll begin, there's no day I don't like yesterday, I had to cry myself out. I just imagine from A to Z, what could have led to his death? What prompted them to kill him? I know it's not the money. Because if it's the money, the money these children, they pay for their own school fees, is much too. So I don't think they are not seeing money. Their parents that send them, they have the money to take care of them. So it's not that little money they saw that they could have killed him for. I just want to believe strongly that they've been having some, maybe envy. He never told us he had any problem with any of his friends. That was why at first we never even believed it would be his friends. You understand? We never suspected it could be any of his friends because he never had anything to do with it. He never told us these are the kind of friends I keep and these are what the things they are doing. You know, so we never looked at that corner. And when we got there and the roommate told us that he gave him his school fees to hold, we were like, you are not a bank. You paid yours, then why didn't you allow him pay? Or as a senior, since you are senior to him, you could have advised him since you are with the money. Why don't you pay your school fees or let me help you pay? So we are working based on what the roommate told us. So we didn't, he didn't never told us he had any problem with anybody until the day he was murdered. But since this latest development, some of the parents of the suspects have contacted you, right? No. Uh, when, it should be on a Thursday. Or oh, last week, Friday, either Thursday or fr th Thursday, one of the parents called and said he was a parent to one of the boys, the very kingpin himself. 
And so my husband said, well, he said, he was like trying to say that this. My husband said, well, he doesn't know anything. He's not in Ghana. If there's anything you want to ask, I think you are free to go to Ghana and ask them over there. I can't be in Nigeria and tell the police in Ghana what they would do. And I think from them, I was he doesn't have anything to comment on this. Let Lord take his place. And that was how they ended. So yesterday, another parents came to the house. And I was like, how come you got uh, address? He had my address, he had my phone number on the paper, the sheet he brought out here. He said he, he collected it from a friend, of which I know it's not possible. And I told him, well, I'm sorry. We don't allow this kind of visit here. You would have come before now. So why are you coming to pay condolence? Condolence to my son that is late, that is still lying lifeless there. Or what, what for? That your son knew what happened to my son or what? what are you, why are you here? And he said, no, they only came to pay condolence and that they are saying, praying that if their son knows anything about his death, he will go for it. But if he doesn't know, good and fine. At the end of the day, what is this like for you? Knowing this piece of information now that you know compared to back then, two months ago, when you just heard that your son had been murdered? I think I am relieved. Because we are trying to take all that drastic measures before now. When I'm going to meet our pastor, he told my husband to keep calm. A few weeks from now, you will hear God in action. And thank God for my husband's faith. He came back and told me he's no longer interested in this case. Let God fight and let justice take his place before we heard about the latest updates. So to me, like I told you earlier, that yesterday was a crying day for me. Every 19th, will always, I will always remember Godwin. Because if he's around today, he was supposed to be in the program. That's why I didn't go to church. His mates are singing there. So I can't be in the, in the service where his mates are singing. And then I'll begin to, in my mind, will keep running up and down that if your boy is here, he should be there join with his mates singing. So I told myself, I don't even need to go out. Let me stay home. So today, if I look at myself, I say, God, I still thank you because compared to what others would have said, you know, when things like this happen, you hear so many stories. Somebody even called and said that this boy was a courtist. This boy... Uh, did this. This boy, if you see him, they cut off his head, they cut off his leg, they cut off. You hear so many stories. But my joy today is that God, wherever he is, his blood has been crying. And today, his God is avenging his blood. And we are happy. For me, I am a bit happy. I'm, I'm a bit, if you look at me, I think I'm a bit relieved compared to the other time. Because now I can say, okay, they didn't they didn't say the boy died being a cortex, or maybe he went to stay somewhere, they shot him, or it was at the, at the end of investigation. You know, the worst part of it is that after investigation, they tell you your son killed himself, or he went for an armed robbery, they shot him, or they were cortex. It would have been the worst. But today, it has somebody snuffed life innocently from, that is out of his wicked heart, took life from him. So I think my sister, I'm relieved because God has actually started a good work. Thank you very much, Mrs. Zayogo. It's a pleasure having you in my house today again. And I want to say thank you to your team for enjoying the